Welcome to Central Art Supplies Inspiration Station, where we share your passion for art. I'm Lara, the Special Projects Coordinator at Central Art, and today's inspiration comes from Angelus Leather Paints. This video will be one of three Angelus videos, and in today's video I'll be demonstrating the Angelus paints on a white leather shoe. I'll show you how to prepare the leather and share tips and techniques to get the best results and how to seal your final product. In the next two videos, I'll show you the best techniques for painting on dark leather and fabric. Now before we get started, if you want to see the other two videos or more product tutorials or product comparisons and reviews, answers to frequently asked questions or your own questions, please click the subscribe button and that little bell to be notified when we post new videos. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram or contact me directly with questions or products you'd like to learn more about. I have those links provided in the description below. So let's start off with introducing you to Angelus Leather Paints. Although they're super popular with people who like to customize shoes, they're not just for shoes, nor are they just for leather. These are acrylic paints that are flexible, self-leveling, and non-cracking right out of the bottle, and they'll adhere to multiple surfaces. Angelus paints and finishes can be applied with a brush, an airbrush, or a pen. And at the end of the video, I'll show you Angelus' 11-piece basic starter kit. It's a really good way to get you started customizing or upcycling everything from, well, your favorite kicks or your reusable shopping bags or even just repairing some marks on your old comfy leather sofa. So the paints come in a one ounce and four ounce bottles. This is the one ounce bottle and as you can see there's quite a bit of paint there actually. So they come in 87 standard colors which include five metallic colors but also an additional seven pearlescent, 12 neon, 27 collector colors and these colors are made to match several of today's most popular brands and styles of shoes on the market and 19 glitter light paints and that's just what they sound like they're glitter and they're really shiny now I'll show you an example of these in just a bit and then they also have a black and white that are flat there are four additives that change the viscosity or the adhesion ability of the paints Dolor makes the paints dry to a factory matte finish, and it's a little bit different than the matte finish, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Too thin is for thinning the paints down. They are acrylic and they are water-based, so you can thin them down a little bit with water, just like any acrylic, but too much and you'll affect the adhesion property. So they have come up with a thinner that works really well, and it's recommended for um, thinning the paint down so you can run it through an airbrush or putting it into paint pens. And Angelus does have paint markers. They're, they come empty so you have to fill them with whatever colors you want. And they have a three millimeter and a five millimeter. But with the too thin, you can put it into any paint pen. So if you have other paint pens lying around the house, it'll work the same. Then they have too hard which is for painting the plastics on shoe parts that are you know, plasticky or other non-porous surfaces. And then too soft, which is for painting on fabrics. So like the sock liners or mesh or canvas or t-shirts or whatever type of fabric you wanna color, the too soft makes the paint heat settable and then washable. So I'll be using that in the third video installment. So to add a finish to your product and your project and give added protection, there's four clear coat finishers. There's matte, satin, high gloss, and what they call normal, which is the same finish the paints dry to. Now these can be applied with a brush or airbrush and straight out of the bottle. So just a note here, if you prepare your surface properly, the acrylic will be crack and scuff resistant and like all acrylics, waterproof straight out of the bottle. So I've included links in the description below to the Angelus website and their YouTube channel for more information on the products and the, the tips and techniques that they have 
available and a lot of their frequently asked questions. Okay, let's get started. First, we have to prep the surface, in this case, a leather shoe. This is the most important step. If you do not prep the surface properly, the paint will not adhere to the surface and it can crack, scuff, or peel. For leather, Angelus has a preparer and deglazer and this removes factory finish from the shoes, also any oils or dirt that are on there. Now, it may also remove some color from the leather, but that's okay because you're gonna be covering it up with color anyway. So Angelus paints aren't recommended for faux leathers. So if you're not sure if your shoe or other leather product is in fact genuine leather, test the deglazer on a small and conspicuous area. Also, sometimes not all parts of a shoe are real leather, like the tongue, which I figured out with these shoes. When I put the deglazer on the tongue, it got really sticky and it took a while for that stickiness to go away. You do not need to do the entire shoe or belt or leather item you're going to paint if you're not going to paint the entire surface. So if you're just going to cover up some scuffs or scratches or fix a spot on your sofa or just put in small accents or colors, then you really only need to apply the deglazer in those areas. Now you can apply the deglazer with cotton balls, Q-tips for tight or small areas, applicator sponges or soft cloth. And you don't need to saturate the leather. You just need to apply the deglazer um, enough to clean the leather well. And then you need to let this dry completely before you start painting. It needs to be dry to the touch. So if you squeeze it and it still feels just a little bit wet, give it a few more minutes. And I've already done this step to save some time. Okay, so now that you've deglazed the areas that you wanna paint, the next step would be taping off areas you don't wanna get paint on, like the midsoles, the sock liners. I put tape under the eyelet, so if painting this area, you don't want paint dripping through. And you can use masking tape or painter's tape, as long as it's a tape that it has enough tack to stay on until you're finished. And you may choose to skip this step if you've got a really steady hand or you're just doing a small area that's not anywhere near these other uh, areas like the midsoles, which can get really easily stained if you accidentally get some paint on there. Uh, and But you definitely, definitely want to mask off any area you're going to want to protect if you're using an airbrush. Now another step that's optional before you start painting is you may want to map out your design first. And you can see that I've actually done that on the shoe. Uh, I just went in with, um, I think it was like a 2B pencil and did my design. And it's kind of important if, if you're going to do something detailed, you want to do that. And there's a couple things because, you know, like on this shoe, I definitely had to draw in all of the honeycomb cells, the bees, and just really put in the main elements that I wanted to do uh, beforehand instead of trying to quote freehand it. Um, and you can do that in a couple different ways. Uh, sometimes leather is not really easy to transfer onto, but you can. I did th both shoes actually. Um, I took f pictures of the shoe and made it basically the same size. I think my picture is just a tiny bit bigger, but I printed it out and I just drew right on the shoe to get an idea of my proportions, where I wanted the elements to be. So I went in and you know, took from all angles and drew on the, the pattern or the, the picture that I wanted. Um, and then you can transfer that with something like Sorel paper or you know, just using graphite on the back of a piece of, um, tracing paper, which is what I did. Uh, Angelus website also has a shoe mock-up. So you can download images of a lot of today's popular brands and styles and do your mock-up on your computer or your tablet, but it does require Adobe Photoshop. So you may have to go old school like I did and take photos and draw on, on, on that, or, you know, 
if you just want to do something really random and abstract, then just get started. Don't worry about it. Okay, so now we have our shoe prepared. We have our areas taped off. We have our design on the shoe. So that means we can get started painting. And the paints, a couple notes here, the paints are fairly translucent. So it's best to apply the paints in thin, even coats rather than trying to put it on thick and get it get coverage in one coat. Uh, you should let each coat dry completely before the next coat, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 if it's kind of cool, like we're getting into the cooler weather now. So like other acrylics, they do dry quickly, um, but you can speed it up by using hair dryer. Now another quick note here, if you are using the pearlescent colors on a light colored background like the white shoes, Angelus recommends using a similar color in the standard finish first for the best effect. Uh, they will also do well on dark backgrounds, which is what I did on this uh, part of the hummingbird. I used just the purple standard finish and then I put the pearlescent red on it to simulate the flashy feathers that hummers have uh, on their head and throat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to apply the first layer of paint and let it dry a little bit and then I'll finish it up with the hair dryer so I can come right back and I'll show you how translucent they are and what other things I run into. Uh, another quick note too is some colors, just like in regular everyday acrylics, some colors are more translucent than others. So some colors may only require maybe two coats while others may require four coats. So as I go, I'll let you know which colors I came across that had those different qualities. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and I will be right back with the first layers. Okay, I'm back with the first layer down and you can see that there's still some of the pencil lines showing through and that's okay because as I add more layers, those should disappear. And you can see that some colors are a bit more transparent than others and you can still see some of the white of the shoe through um, some of the layer, the layer, and that's okay. Again, we're just gonna keep adding layers until we get it to the opacity that we want and the colors that we want. So like on the, on the octopus here, you can see these areas right in here around the eye where it's really, really transparent. That's like just, a straight just first layer and then in here what I did is I had laid down um, a layer that looked just like this over the whole thing where everything was purple let it dry and then I just splotched on another layer so this is really almost two layers but I wanted to leave some of that transparency open in the background because I'm gonna go in and put some other colors on top there so I didn't want <clears throat> to have to cover a really dark part of the purple so, um, and I don't know if you can tell just yet, but the eye, I used the copper, so you got a nice little metallic sheen there. I'm going to lay down at least one more layer there too, because it is also a little transparent. And then uh, these areas here where the pencil's showing through, like I said, that's fine, because I'm going to go in with some darker color, and I'm actually going to end up outlining a lot of the suckers with the purple. So all of that is going to either go away or look a little bit different when I'm done. So you can see that uh, some colors, like the uh, turquoise, actually usually on the other shoe that I did, on the B uh, pollinator shoe, this only took two layers to get fully solid coverage, whereas the purple took four layers to get full coverage. Even though it's a darker per, a darker color, it just seems to be a little more transparent. This one covered really, really well. 
and I didn't have to do more than two layers. Now the light pale yellow here also took two layers even though it was a lighter color because it had some white mixed in. So kind of like adding titanium white to other colors, you're going to increase its opacity a bit because titanium white is such a strong um, opaque white. And I don't know what the specific color their white is, but it seems pretty opaque. So adding it to colors does increase the color's opacity. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the next layers down and do some start doing some of the little bubbles here and see how many more layers we need to lay down. I might just lay down one or two just to you know see where we're at and then I'll pop back on and um, be able to show you like I haven't done a second layer on the the fin yet and that, actually that might be a good way to show you that um, this was a slightly lighter gray so it's going to take a little more coverage if I want to maintain that lighter shade on the fin than I do on the rest of the shark. So I will go ahead and throw in my next colors and you can see here too real quick um, some of the uh, some of the shoe color came off when I deglazed so I might go ahead and just hit this section with some white and see how much of a difference that makes otherwise I may have to decide to go ahead and do um, this area, the eyelet area, with another color, which means I'll have to kind of color around these. Um, but we'll see how that works out. So I'll be back in a few and we'll go on to the following and final steps. Okay, so here it is, all finished. You can see that I have taken all the tape off now, if I was going to go ahead and put a clear coat finisher on this, I would have left the tape on until I was completely finished. That way I wouldn't, again, get any drips through the eyelets or get any spray or brush of the clear coat on the midsoles. So even though the paint is, is dry, uh, Angelus recommends that you wait 24 hours before applying a clear coat finish and then wait another 24 hours before you actually wear the shoes or use the purse or the belt or anything like that. You just wanna make sure everything is completely cured and that way you don't get the potential of any cracks or dust or you know anything on there that you don't want and that might be difficult to get off once that sets. So here's the finished shoe. Um, I hope you like it. I had a lot of fun with it. And I talked to you at the beginning of this video about glitter lights. Now, glitter lights are really cool. They are very glittery, very sparkly. Um, and you do use them basically the same as the regular acrylics, as uh, the Angelus regular acrylics. You want to put them on in very light thin layers you don't want to try and glob it all on because then you don't get an even coverage with the glitter it kind of glumps in and then it can flake off so you want to make sure that you do thin coats really spread give an even spread of the glitter and it will you know you can put on as many layers as you want and it will be nice and glittery what they don't recommend is putting a clear finish on the glitter lights when you're done because it can interfere with the sparkle of the glitter. So if you put on a dull matte satin, it's obviously going to really cut that shininess down. And if you put in the high gloss, it can also obscure the sparkle. It'll just make everything look really shiny, but you won't get that sparkle effect. Now, one thing that's kind of cool that you can do with the glitter lights, you see I put it on the back of this shoe. Now, this is really kind of a neat idea for people who run or bike at night because this is very reflective and uh, headlights are gonna really catch this in the dark. I took it into a dark room and hit it with my flashlight and it really did just pop up. So that might be something fun to, you know, do to your old trainers. Put some glitter lights on them and make them 
part of your um, safety measures when you're out running at dusk, dawn, or if you're a night runner. So uh, one other thing, uh, I've found that the glitter lights work better on a dark surface than on a light surface. So on this, I actually went under and did this nice deep blue uh, standard color first, let that dry overnight, and then put the glitter lights on over the top of that. And if you use this on the black leather, it's really, really pops out. This is just a little, little, piece of black leather I have laying around and I this is one coat actually on the black leather and you can see it's super sparkly super shiny has really nice coverage didn't have to go in and put a ton of coats on and it it just really uh, really pops so those are a lot of fun especially if you're doing kids shoes or you you know just happen to like sparkly things it's it's a really nice really nice way to um, spruce up a pair of shoes or other things you have lying around the house. Now, I also said at the beginning of the video, I was gonna show you their basic starter kit. So the basic starter kit is really a very nice little kit to get you started. Uh, it's an 11 piece set. It comes with, uh, most importantly, a bottle of deglazer and prepare, blue, red, and yellow, black, white, and also uh, five brushes. And it's a nice little brush set. You've got a flat, an angle, a filbert, um, a nice detail round, and then another small flat. And it's, it's just a really nice way to get you started. And it's got directions, you know, to get you going. Um, and it's just a really nice way to to start playing with it, see if you're gonna like it. I think once you do play with it, you're gonna start thinking about all those things in your closet or the next time you're at the thrift store um, that you might wanna start playing with, creating some really nice personal handmade uh, project. Well, I hope this video has inspired you to look at your old or even your new kicks or leather accessories with some new interests. Maybe they aren't quite ready to go to the thrift store yet. Or maybe make that shoe or accessory hoarder, um, sorry, collector in your life one of a kind gift. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more Angelus and other videos. Our next Angelus video will be on how to prep and paint dark leather followed by a third on painting fabric. So stay inspired, stay creative, and I'll see you next time on Central Art Supplies Inspiration Station.